Welcome to The Mohit Show. Today I'll be covering stories from r slash dtrans, a well-moderated subreddit for people questioning, desisting, or detransitioning. I will be protecting the identities of these posters since individuals in this community have been harassed when their stories have been discussed. This video's first post is titled, Why Does Nobody Tell You the Truth? About transitioning. I didn't transition because I wanted to be a guy. I transitioned because I wanted to be male. I thought I was supposed to have been born the wrong way and despise the fact that I was born in the wrong body. Why did nobody tell me that my body was right? That regardless of how I felt, it wasn't going anywhere. The main things I was dysphoric about were rooted in biology. I will never have XY chromosomes. I will never have a... I will never be a father. And yet I persisted. For what? I needed to accept myself as female. I spent years despising myself, believing that to transition would cure me, but it never did. I hated men for being male. I hated women for being cis and accepting it. I just wish someone had told me that transitioning wouldn't fix anything. I didn't need to change myself. I needed to find myself. And now that I have, I feel like an absolute idiot for putting myself through this hell on earth. I wish I could turn back time and tell myself all of this before I needlessly ruined my life. From the comments. I have tried to tell my daughter, after going through trans stuff myself, and she responded by cutting me out of her life. It's very difficult to tell someone something they don't want to hear. I'm glad I told her the truth, even if she hates me for it. Maybe she will stop and think before getting body parts removed. I know, right? It's something that's so celebrated transitioning like you're finally taking a mask off when in fact you're really putting a new one on. I think gender expression is important and I think something to certainly be played with, but changing biological hormones is ridiculous and doesn't cure anyone of anything. Only induces pain at the end of the day. I'm sorry you had to go through that pain, and I'm sorry we both have to live with a ruined life. I hope you'll be able to find peace. And in reply to this, Exactly, as long as we're aiming to fit into the made-up societal gender norms, we will never be happy. In an ideal society, we wouldn't feel the need to. But we don't live in that world. S is hard. Next post titled, A thought from my fiancé. I don't wear dresses and makeup, so why do those things make you a woman? My fiancé was openly supportive of my transition, but now that I'm detransitioned, she's opening up about the underlying feelings she had during the whole idea. Ordeal. She is not a dress and makeup wearing girl and isn't highly concerned with her physical appearance. During my transition, I did my hair and makeup every morning so I could look like a woman. She recently asked me, how do those things make someone a woman? Is she any less of a woman than I was because she didn't do them? She would be out of the house an hour earlier than me. Was I more of a woman because of that? It's clear that most transitions, mine included, are just a caricature of what we perceive womanhood and manhood to be. Putting on a dress never made me a woman. I hope more people struggling with their gender can come to this realization. Next post, titled, The trans community groomed me as a teen, but I made it out happy. When I was a lonely 14 to 15 year old, I was groomed online by the trans community. 
One male to female person in particular had joined an internet community I was part of. It was full of sexually confused young men like myself, and she took me under her wing. She asked me all sorts of questions. If I liked girly stuff, if I was attracted to men, if I knew how pretty I was, and the answers confirmed it for her. I was transgender. She'd recently come out as trans herself, and she wanted to save younger people like me from getting too old and getting irreversible masculine features. I was a bitter, young, asocial teenager. I read a lot of young adult novels. I really believe this world is a F. So she was like a hero to me. So confident, happy, funny. I wanted to be just like her. She told me not to trust therapists or doctors because there was a huge conspiracy to push the trans community down. She made hormones sound like magical drugs that would make all my problems go away, being antisocial, fat, low esteem, etc. She would always compliment my pictures based on how feminine they were so I'd spend hours desperately trying to feminize my face before taking selfies. She invited me to a community made up of trans people who would constantly affirm one another. People who questioned or desisted were immediately thrown out. It was almost terrifying how cult-like it was, something that my young mind couldn't comprehend at the time. She asked me if I felt out of place, lonely, sad, depressed. If I felt like it didn't belong sometimes, I like things I wasn't supposed to like. What teenager doesn't feel those things once in a while, especially a gay teen? I was very fortunate I stumbled across, the, across a post by a trans person who was brutally honest about the reality of transitioning. The social stigma, the emotional trauma, the medical appointment costs, the years spent transitioning rather than living life. The regrets of an irreversible medical decision. Her post opened my eyes. Why wasn't anyone else saying this stuff? Why were they painting it as a magic cure-all? That post planted the seed in my mind that saved me from a life of regret. I quickly learned that my supportive trans community was only supportive so long as I was transitioning. I was told to ignore my doubts, that it was internalized transphobia, that if I didn't hurry up and transi transition as fast as possible, I would never pass as a woman. I realized I wasn't part of a community that cared about me as a person. They cared that I was trans. My depression only mattered if it was due to the gender dysphoria. My social anxiety, suicidal thoughts, all of it only mattered if it was due to gender dysphoria. Though at the time it was extremely painful to be socially ostracized, it saved me. Had I gone through and transitioned, I would not be alive today. Today, I'm a happy, healthy, confident 24-year-old gay man. I've been dating another man for almost three years. I'm in college. I've worked through my depression, social anxiety, suicidal thoughts. But the process was long, hard, and certainly not a magical solution. But it was real. I'm surrounded by people who love and care for me, and I don't need to worry about their acceptance, that their acceptance is predicated on my gender. Still a bit chubby, but hey, cheeseburgers are great. If you're struggling, questioning, afraid of detransition, you still have a lot of life left to live. Whether you're playing with the idea of transitioning or have already gone through surgery, you're not stuck where you are. If you have the strength to transition, you have the strength to detransition. Believe in yourself. From the comments, reacting to where the OP said, they accused me of hurting the whole community. That's why some of them hate detransitioners so much. Our existence calls into question the myth that the only way a dysphoric person can ever be happy is by transitioning as soon as possible. Anyway, thank you for sharing your story. Hopefully it can help someone who reads it, the way the post you came across helped you. Next post, titled, I'm mad. I'm man mad because I'm a grown a man with effing tits. I'm mad because I hate myself for getting groomed into the Reddit trans cult and effing up my body. I'm mad because the medical establishment failed me. I know I'm responsible for my actions, but doctors are supposed to know better than me. This informed consent policy 
where it's just a free-for-all hormone prescription factory, is beyond irresponsible. I was a vulnerable alcoholic with OCD and a whole slew of other mental health conditions. And yet they just said, well, here's your titty pills, uwu. I gained almost 100 pounds due to the lack of testosterone and grew D-sized boobs. I look like a freak. I'd be damned if there isn't a reckoning in the next decade or so, with young adults detransing left and right, and doctors getting sued up the ass. I hate that I'm a part of this grand botched experiment. From the comments. I think one of the problems with doctors saying no now is that they face the onslaught of abuse targeted towards everyone who questions transitioning now. They fear losing their license to practice or just getting taken to court, then getting dragged for months through the media by people calling them every single slur under the sun. I can honestly see why they do it. The same way scumbags who burn down abortion clinics were radicalized enough to do that, trans communities will come to a point where they're comfortable burning down someone's home for transphobia. I don't agree with what is honestly malpractice on their part, but on the other, we all live on this planet and try to protect ourselves at the end of the day. I'm really sorry for everything you've gone through and I hope that over time you can get the help you need to recover and live a life that you're happy in. And another comment. Meanwhile, any doctor that currently does not allow this to happen gets burned at the stake. It's a lose-lose on their part. Next post, title, It's Hip to be Trans. Lately, I've been annoyed at the argument against the social contagion aspect of transition, when it seems so obvious to anyone willing to open their eyes and look that it plays a significant role. I keep seeing the argument that being trans is so difficult. Did, uh, did why would anyone who wasn't trans choose to transition? Or, no one is glorifying being trans. It actually sucks and makes life more difficult. Let's say we ignore all the copious amounts of posts about how great and awesome being trans is and how special it makes you. Let's even ignore all the posts about how inherently awful cis people are and how they'll never understand how special and awesome it is to be trans. Even foregoing that, I'm left thinking about the brain space I was in, I was in around puberty-ish, maybe 12 to 15 when I was a wannabe goth kid. I used to beg and plead and wish I had schizophrenia or depression or bipolar or whatever because I thought it would make me edgy and cool. I knew that people with mental illness had a tough time but I didn't care. I thought that the struggle was part of the allure. How deep and mysterious and cool I would be if I was one of those people struggling. And the thing is, the community I was in encouraged this. Yes, the broader community did not and judge people with these illnesses, but the counterculture sub-community I was in furthered that narrative of severe mental illness equals interesting, mysterious, and cool. I didn't even have access to the internet back then. I see the same thing happening in these queer communities. The broader culture might be a little hostile to trans ass. But even that isn't as hostile as they make it out when you're white, middle class, and living in Western society. But that doesn't mean that you get a hell lot of validation within these smaller circles that makes it appealing and the S from outside worth it. I think that the outside oppression is even part of the draw. We like having a cause to rally behind, and we like thinking we're unique and all that. If I, pre-internet in my life anyway, the internet existed when I was in middle school, I just didn't have access to it because my parents refused to have it in, that, my, in the house, was wishing to experience horrible hallucinations in order to be unique and fit in with the group, I don't think it's far-fetched to say that other teenagers, aka the vast majority of people who are transitioning these days, might also like the idea of a trans struggle and still want something ultimately destructive. Just my thoughts. From the comments. Also, victimized identities ironically give people more social cultural power in this current age. Not only do most people accept claims of having a victimized identity at face value, people often blindly validate the feelings of those who express these claims. Those who question the, those claims will, be, will basically be exiled and be labeled an irredeemable bigot. 
I think this principle very much describes what you stated about how it's hip to be trans and can also be explained and can and can also explain so many other trends like the DID TikTok trend. Teenagers are especially prone to this because they want a sense of belonging to some group, yet they also want to stand out from the rest. This probably explains why teenagers slash young adults are always at the forefront of these cultural trends, whether that's hippies, goths, or whatever's going on right now. And uh, I'm adding this. For context, due to it being seen as cool and quirky, Thousands of kids have self-induced, often inaccurate, Tourette syndrome and dissociative identity disorder-like behaviors due to TikTok trends. This got to the point of becoming a medical anomaly commented on by scientific articles. Another commenter said, The thing is, you don't even need something to be appealing for social contagion to happen. Sometimes social contagion is driven by fear or personal lack of control. I've had this conversation a few times. I actually think that one big part of what makes it so appealing to many middle-class Western white people transitioning en masse is that it seems like a convenient way to escape being the oppressor. White guilt is real. I'm, I'm part of this historically oppressive group. But I'm not as bad as the rest of them because I'm oppressed in this way, too. For example, I felt like... I felt less like a bad person when I stopped IDing as a trans man and lived while IDing as non-binary for a few years. Thank God, so glad I dodged the bullet of being an evil man for something more pure. It's a fairly unpopular opinion, but I do believe that it's a driving force for some, among many other things. And commenting on that... Yes, I feel this. It's so dumb, but due to what I was seeing on social media, I felt so ashamed and guilty about being a cishet white girl. And of course, good allies shut up and listen, so when I transitioned, it felt kind of liberating to feel like I could express my opinions without being dismissed immediately for being part of the oppressors. Note that, note, that was my perception, not necessarily the reality. I'm pretty sure that wasn't the reason for my transition, but I could 100% see it as a factor for so many progressive people who feel guilty. Everyone is at least a little gender non-conforming, so that's an easy thing to latch onto and take on as an oppressed identity, if that makes sense. Today's last post. Don't, don't let them tell you it isn't a cult. If you feel like you left a cult, it's probably because you left the cult. Brainwashing through memes and social media, asking for donations, requiring a belief in some entity that is unscientific in nature, gender identity, we can't prove it exists. Believing in the concept of gender identity as truth will be by definition a religious belief. The catchphrases, trans women are women, gender's a spectrum, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, etc. The shaming and cancelling, the lack of tolerance from other viewpoints, the peer pressure to not be friends with people of different viewpoints, even to cut off family. The promotion of drug use. This is what cults do. This is what was done to me. There might not be a proper name for this cult yet, but I know I left a cult. I won't accuse anyone of being in a cult, but I can speak for myself and my own experiences, and those were my experiences. These experiences fit the criteria for cult-like behavior, even if there's no clear figurehead. From the comments, yes, no, maybe. The online trans communities do have a very right think way of looking at gender, which very much feels like thought control and shuts down critical thinking. Every time I see people piling on an ask transgender post with one correct answer, I absolutely see this. At least to Reddit's credit, there are, there's usually an outlier or two where someone will inject some less biased truth into the replies, but it often gets overwhelmed by the right think and sometimes angrily downvoted into oblivion. Independent thought shouldn't be mislabeled as bigotry, especially when the thought is entirely based on personal introspection. That said, I feel like you've gone way too far in your rejection of all this. Some of these things are very much real, maybe just not in the absolutist way that the online trans community often presents them, a big one being gender identity. 
Gender identity isn't some magic gender soul. It's not religion, it's psychology. Identity exists, and part of identity is how we relate to gender. We've been studying identity for centuries, and quite a lot is known about identity formation in young children. To your point, there's a lot more magic and mysticism in how some people seem to be describing gender recently. The online concept, online trans concept of gender is baseless, but the dry clinical concept is very much real. There are lots of situations where people's gender identity won't match their bodies. Lots of different reasons from all different areas of nature and nurture. This shouldn't really be controversial, but it's one of those one way of thinking things that often get shut down from both sides. All of us are stuck with our bodies and minds, and we should be able to change one or the other to improve our lives. The idea that transition is the only way TM is untrue, but it is one approach. Addressing the source of gender dysphoria through therapy, etc. is a valid approach. Except accepting the incong incongruence is also perfectly valid. The fact that only transition ever gets talked about and the others get ex aggressively shut down is the most cult-like thing I've experienced. People forgetting that the real point of all of this is personal happiness, authenticity, and self-love, not specifically how they get there. Commenting on this comment. Just because it's online doesn't mean it doesn't hurt anyone. I don't believe that most, pe most of the people who've had their uterus removed or their inverted came up with the idea themselves. They read about it somewhere else. It was a suggestion that they read or heard and decided was the, their best choice because they felt alienated from other members of their sex. Nobody just wakes up and realizes they need to be dependent on a third party to provide them necessary hormones for the rest of their life. What if a war happens and the insurance companies dip and the testosterone manufacturers are gone? How long would your body survive without hormones if you can't produce them organically? Is anyone asking these questions? Another commenter. I remember at one point seeing a list of characteristics of cults and realizing how many of them applied to the trans community. I can't find the list now, but I know a few of the characteristics, characteristics, characteristics were discouragement, shame, exile for questioning key, key beliefs, isolating you from friends and family if they don't agree, telling you to cut them off, us versus them mentality, etc. Definitely cultish traits. And the last comment, I've left two cults, Jehovah's Witnesses and gender ideology. So I'm both a Christian and gender apostate. One effed up my mind, the other my body. It's good to be out and finding clarity. That will be all for today. If you think more of these stories need to be discussed, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a good day.